Thank you all for coming. Uh, it's wonderful that you've come to this celebration of Mary's life. And we're going to split things up into little sections to make it uh, interesting. And we've got our barbershop harmony chorus here. And we're going to sing a few numbers to you. And um, we're going to start off with um, Mixed Agenda, which is one of our quartets. And then we're going to have some slides run through, running through Mary's life since uh, I first met her. We're concentrating on Mary. Fortunately or unfortunately, Mary had to come with me wherever I went. So there's a bit of me in there as well, but you can ignore that. It's, we want to talk about Mary and, and the life she's had and, and how she coped with all the changes. Every rolling stone gets to fear when home sweet home is far away, away. I'm a rolling stone who's been so alone until, until today. Because I'm gone. Gonna take a sentimental journey. Gonna set my heart at ease. I'm gonna make, gonna make a sentimental to renew all memories. I got my bag. Got my bag. I got my reservations. Spend his time. Spend his time I could afford. I'm like a child. Like a child in wild anticipation. Don't to hear that all aboard. Seven. That's the time we leave at seven. Seven. I'll be waiting up for heaven, heaven, counting every mile of railroad track that takes me back. I never knew, never thought my heart could be so yearning. Why did I, why did I decide to roam? I'm gonna take, gonna take a sentimental journey, sentimental journey home, seven. The time we leave at seven, seven. I'll, I'll be, be waiting up for heaven, heaven. Counting every mile of railroad track that takes me back. I never thought, never thought my heart would be so yearning. Why did I, why did I decide to roam? I'm gonna take, gonna take a sentimental journey. Sentimental journey home. Sentimental journey home. Sentimental journey home. I'm going home. Oh, When I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe displayed then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. Thou art. I can tell you now the time.
Can you tell you the time? I can take you to the place. Take you to the place. Lord, save me. Save me. By his, by his grace. His wonderful grace. I cannot tell you how. Can't tell you how. And I cannot tell you why. I do not want to tell you all the Tell time. me all about it in the by and by, by and by, by, by and by. Some bright morning when this life is over, I'll fly away, fly away, fly away to a home on God's sister shore. I'll fly away, fly away, fly away. Don't you'll be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. All the praises will be gathered over on the other shore, and the roll is gone, and the roll will be there. When the roll is gone, the young are all in there. When the roll is gone, the young are all in there. When the roll is gone, the young are When the roll is gone, the young are all in there. Fly away. Can you see okay? Yes. So, Mary's life at celebration. First slide, that's, you, I know you can't see that properly, but I'd put it up because I want you to understand, appreciate all the various places that Mary has gone to, has had to adapt to, and has to make a home in. So, if you have a look here at the top, this is Australia. And the blue is when I started working with the American Corporation International Harvester. Here was where we got moved to Singapore. So we were in Singapore for a couple of years. Then we were in Pakistan for two or three years. Then we were in um, Beirut for three or four years. Then we were in Turkey for four or five years. Then we were in France for all those years, but came back to the UK, came down to, where am I here? Australia. Australia, yeah. I'd like it. That's Australia. And then we were in Saudi Arabia for a few years, then South Africa for three years or so. And then all this lockdown here, uh, Saudi Arabia, where I retired in 2006 and then back to Aussie. But, that's, I'm going to try, walk, you, walk you through all of this little by little with some interesting slides, I hope. Okay, so this is Mary. I, I tried to find a, an early photo before I knew her. This is 1955, I think, or thereabouts, in Jedra. It's quite pretty and easy. <laughs> so anyway, I get up to Jedra from a farm in Dorset, and I went up to see my mother. My mother had remarried. She'd married a uh, Church of England minister. And when I got up there, he said, you're too late for the nativity play. He said, but you can help with the lighting. So uh, I was in the church with another guy called Jackie Oliver. He knew what to do. I'm looking down at the stars that were performing in the nativity play. They had beautiful voices. One was Bill playing Joseph. And the other one was Mary playing Mary. I said to my mother, you know, the next day or something, he said, no, that Mary, Mary Wise was her name. Uh, I wouldn't mind going out with her. And she said, you'll be lucky. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was going to go to Canada. I just have to spend a little bit of time here. Going to go to Canada because they wanted people like me, agricultural background, and you knew quite a little bit, I might say. And then uh, I s said to Mary, I said, look, I think I'm going to go to Canada. Uh, would you like to come with me? Yes, she said. <laughs> My father said, uh, well, what about Australia? I said, yeah, okay. 
But he said, you can get there for 10 quid. <laughs> so I, I, I went up to the High Commission in Edinburgh, spoke to this Australian, he said, uh, he had no trouble. He says, uh, Dalgettys want people like you. I said, well, that sounds okay. So I came back to Mary and I said, some good chats we might get to Australia if you're interested. And she said, yes. <laughs> Time moved on a little bit and we got quite serious. And I, I said, uh, uh, we would, will you marry me? She said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we both went up to the High Commission and saw the same guy. He's nicely dressed, nice suit and everything. I introduced my fiancé to him. He picked up the phone and he said, you remember that guy, Richard Denton? I said, yeah. Well, he's engaged. So he turned around to me and said, that job at Dalkett is a single man, not for couples. <laughs> he says, we can get you out there as a couple, but you'll have to be married. <laughs> oh, righty out. How long will that take? He said, well, it could take two or three months before we find a place for you. Oh, okay. So we go back to Jedburgh. I said to my stepfather, well, um, you know, we've got to get married. He said, okay. And then telegram came a week after we spoke to the guy at the High Commission. It said, you're booked on the SS or sober, leaving November the 1st. Holy moly, that's less than a month away. <laughs> then we got married in three weeks, and then off we went. So we got married, there she is. Pretty, isn't she? And then uh, I didn't have anybody up there that I knew very well, but a, a, a young man called Charles Stewart in there. He stepped in for me as best man. And of course, there's Mary and me. And there's Mary's sister, Frances, who was bridesmaid, and my little sister was flower girl. So there we had the reception. And off we went, and they put us on the train at Newcastle. We went down to Dorset. Saw so my family in Dorset, my grandparents, uncles, aunties, cousins, and they were there for a night or so. That's another story on there too. And then we went off to uh, London. My uh, granny, her maiden name was Studley. And there were quite a few Studleys that had gone all over the world. Some had gone to the States, and uh, some in Canada and California. Uh, more than one went down to South Africa, and I met one of them, Ocean Bordati Aldo. And one, at least, came out here to Australia. And she married a Saunders, and, and they had three children, one girl and two boys. One of the boys was a marine surveyor. So when we got to, Brit uh, got to London, we got on the... Uh, uh, SS or Sova, and this marine surveyor, distant cousin of mine, spirited us through all the formalities, uh, introduced us to the purser, and got us a lovely cabin. Anyway, so uh, we sail. They told us it was going to be very rough going through the Bay of Liskay. It was smooth as anything. We got to Gibraltar, and uh, they told us it was going to be very smooth through uh, the Mediterranean. It wasn't. It was rough as bags. <laughs> I had a dressing gown on the back of the door, and I could see it. <laughs> yeah. But not Mary. Mary was fine. <laughs> she was getting up for her brekkies and her lunch and everything, and there she is, you know. She, she could handle that, no problem whatsoever. And uh, anyway, we get to Port Suez, and there the ship stopped, Port Suez, and the Gully Gully Man came on. Gully Gully Man is the magician. So he comes on, he entertains all the people. But we were set up, we know that now. So he's got me up front and gave me a well, 10 bob note and a half a crown, put it in my hand, told me to throw it overboard, which I did. <laughs> of course, it wasn't a 10 bob note and a half a crown, but he found enough from somebody else. But then he got Mary up, and then he tells her to go and sit down. So see that little stage there? She stepped down off the stage. She got about as far as this and went, ah! And out of her bothers, she would shove all these day old chick. <laughs> Nobody saw him do it. Mary never felt it when they really shut them down there. <laughs> Off she walked six or seven steps, and then just they began to all flood it out. It, it was a hell of a trip. And by then, of course, everybody knew Mary on the bottom to me. <laughs> so then we sail on, we go to Yemen. That was the first time we saw poverty, bought a pair of flip flops for two bob. 
Then we went down to uh, Fremantle, stopped there for a day. Then we went to Adelaide, liked Adelaide a lot, stopped there for a day or so. Had our first salad in Australia with carrots in it. I'd never had raw carrots in a salad before, so that was the first. <laughs> and then uh, we stopped off in, in Sydney, and there we took, came off the uh, boat. We put on a bus to uh, Central Station, then took the train up to Brisbane. In Brisbane, we were taken to Younger Bar, which is a heritage house on Kangaroo Point. And our good friends, Sharon is here, Maureen and Julie, you had the newer bit at the back for families. And we made good friends there. So anyway, we had to get a job. And I'll short circuit it takes too long, but I got a job on a dairy farm. We get on the train and we go up to Kilcoy. I'm dressed in a suit and Mary's dressed in her white wine dress. Uh, this farmer, Kevin Rogan, he meets us. He said, well, he said, this job is for a couple. Can she mill? I said, yes. <laughs> anyway, that was Mary. There were six units. I gave one unit to Mary, showed her what to do, and she did it. No problem. Mary cruised through it, and um, we were there for a few months. And then, uh, yeah. so I had to catch this horse in the morning. And uh, they got round up the cows. I mean, the cows didn't volunteer any milk like they were back in where I came from. Anyway, Mary got pregnant. That's what happens, is that I thought we should move on because, you know, the conditions were a little rudimentary. So a guy that had spoken to us earlier, he came to me and said, look, said, well, the person I selected didn't work out. Would you like to come? I said, yeah. But he had a, a, a very, very nice property up in the headwaters of the Brisbane River Valley called Burnett. So he was called Burnett, so his forefathers must have named that part of the world. So he went up to his property, and um, after a while, Mary uh, uh, had Nicola, and we had to drive to Kilcoy Hospital, and that's where Nicola was born. And um, we were doing okay. This farm... He had a Danish piggery, which is quite good because I knew a bit about that, so that was okay. He had free-range turkeys, and he had uh, steers, the beef cattle, roaming on the hills. So I learned how to ring back because we had, I thought they did in those days, did the pigs and everything, and then the turkeys. Now back to the turkeys, the turkeys were free-ranging, they were all over. So when I'm feeding the pigs, you know, you, you've got a feed trough in front of you, pigs are behind there, and they're coming to the feed trough, and you're on this side, and you're putting the feed in. The turkeys also used to join in. And so the turkeys would go in, and they, they go, I flew on a feed, that's okay, they were allowed to do that. Sometimes they didn't move quickly enough. They'd be in there, and they'll pick up, crunch, oh, one another dead turkey. <laughs> we ate a lot of turkey there. Uh, anyway, uh, it didn't work out, and uh, that property, so... So we moved on, and we moved up to our friends uh, on the on the on the Darling Downs, the Brigalone. So we got a cottage there given us by the farmer. Uh, it was probably one of the worst cottages that we had, and it had all these cottages had dunnies, by the way. That was, that was a new experience for Mary, and for me too, for my mother. But this one had the long drop. You know what I mean by the long drop? <laughs> Anyway, uh, when I got there, he said to me, he said, uh, can you drive that truck? I said, yes. It was an international R195, for a few truckies here, a semi-trailer, and he, I, you could uh, two bins on it, so you about six ton in each bin, so 12. So he, he said, you could take the wheat to the, to the top. By the way, Mary, is, she's got a little baby, Nicola, and she's having to battle with broken wire in the rain tank. I had to boil all the water and everything. And, but she had Auntie Maureen to help her and look after her. I'd been driving this truck for a couple of weeks. He said, what about your license? I better have a look at it. So I go. He says, you can't. I'm not supposed to drive a truck. I said, well, I don't know. That's what they gave me in Brisbane. Put in my English license. They gave me this one. And you asked me to drive the truck. So he said, oh, OK. Well, when you go into Dolby and you go to the police station and see if you can get it endorsed. Went up the steps in the police station. In those days, Queensland police dressed in khaki uniform. Big desk sergeant there. He was as big as me. And so I said, oh, Mr. A would ask me to bring my license in for you to look at it. 
to drive a truck. He said, how do I know you can drive a truck? I said, well, I didn't park it outside. <laughs> Better move on because I'm talking to me. So uh, I'm not sure where this was, but this is Nicola. That's uh, October when uh, that's taken. It's Pittsworth, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to show Mary she was looking pretty darn good, wasn't she? <laughs> didn't think we were getting on so well in, a, in the country that we decided to pack up and come down to Brisbane. So we went to, came to Brisbane and we rented a house in Graceville. And I did a few jobs, you know, and put a few crusts on the table. And uh, then decided that, uh, well, this is not going properly. I'll write to three companies a week till I get something. So I wrote to International Harvester, Massey Ferguson, some of you will know the names, and ACF and Shirley's Fertilizers. International Harvester were first off the block. So they called on Thursday. They said, come in and see us. So I went in. He said, when do you start? I said, well, anytime. He said, report Monday. <laughs> Mary's quite happy at this news. I'm going to have something regular job, you know. <laughs> I think I was paid £17 a week. I was put into the factory warehouse, putting tractors together. So I did that. And, uh, and then uh, they put me out on the road as a sales rep. I don't know if I got his in. Yeah, come to that now. So I'm on the road as a sales rep, and I'm getting £90 a month. Mary is really happy. <laughs> and anyway, um, and I was put with a guy, and he was called George Adam, but he's a brilliant old man, but he was about ready to retire. And he did retire, and then they gave me his job. So now I'm a zone manager. I'm 23 or 24 years old. <laughs> so Mary wanted a home. Fair enough. So we sold the car and the trailer that we had. That was enough for a deposit. So Mary trots her into the Bank of New South Wales in Roma Street. She goes there with a pram and little Nicola and everything. And she's asking for a mortgage. And the conversation goes something like this. Have you got any family out here in Australia that can back you? Or... <laughs> no. <laughs> Have you got any close friends that can talk for you? No. <laughs> How long has your husband worked for International Harvester? Two weeks. <laughs> it's a true story. Anyway, she got the mortgage. We bought this little house. This picture was taken eight or nine years ago, so we bought it in 963, so that's the date on it, so we bought it. Anyway, as, as I was own manager, I'm now getting 130 pounds of money. <laughs> Very happy. <laughs> After a while, they moved us from there up to Cairns. We got up to Cairns, and um, we, we rented a, a nice house in fresh water. We, we quite liked it. Didn't like the cane toads. There's probably millions of them there. House wasn't air-conditioned, so, you know, you had to put up with the temperature and the humidity. But we made friends with the people at the back of us who were producing a newspaper called The Northerner. So Mary then became involved in helping produce The Northerner newspaper. After a while, these people at the back decided that they would move, and we decided we'd take their house. We had been paying seven quid a week, but we could get their house for five quid, so save two quid then. <laughs> so we were there several, several years, and then uh, they moved me down to Bundaberg. So Mary had to find a new home um, in Bundaberg, 42 Vasey Street, and she did, and it was time for us to have another baby but uh, couldn't manage it on her own, so we went and bought one. That's Katrina. <laughs> we got uh, Katrina from Martha Hospital, two weeks old, something like that. Brought her back, then Nicola had a little sister to play with. Anyway, with this new job, I had to take it on, on like, like a road train, so we had an echo truck and a trailer, put this harvester on it, and all the bits and pieces go with it. The guys were dressed in their white, Overalls, red hard hats, IH and on the front. We started up in Mossman and we demonstrated this damn machine all the way down Mossman, Cairns, Babinda, Innisfail, Tully, Ingham, and then jumped past uh, Townsville and into the Burdekin uh, and on down through. So we demonstrated the machines during the day, sometimes two days, where all the farmers from the area would come and have a look at these machines. And in the evening, we would have clinics. So that was my thing, you know, clinics. So we had a lot of photographs, and I could put the photographs up and just 
bang on about uh, how good the machines were and what they could do and everything. We sold a lot of machines. We did rather well. Moving on, I got a call from their office in Melbourne. Uh, go down and see him. So it was uh, it was American guy there, but then camp chap camp. He said, "Hey, he said, uh, we got a." So if you take jobs and want to send you overseas, you got to go? So said, yeah, I'll go. Mary, you okay with that? Yes. So the office guy said, so what sort of passport you got? So I don't have a passport. I said, why? You don't have a passport? So I didn't need a passport to come to Australia. No oh, all right. Okay, we'll get you an Aussie passport. Is that all right? Is that sure thing? Go for it. Two days went by, said, too bloody hard. <laughs> I'll get you a British passport. Is that all right? I said, yeah, go on, go for it. And so he did Anyway, we got to Singapore. It was up to us to find our own accommodation. That was the way the company operated. We found a place, and there was a, a university professor that was going on six months sabbatical to the UK. So we rented his house. With the house came a servant, and her name was Ta. Uh, this is our first encounter with any sort of servant. The problem was Ta had been trained to you know, serve the master first. So, you know, breakfast will be coming and maybe there's a broken egg. Mary got the broken egg. <laughs> I'm telling the truth, it's pretty much like So Mary tolerated her and they got all okay, but six months was up and then we left. So anyway, moving on, what's next? Six months was up and then we left. Oh, are we going to Karachi? I don't have any pictures, so I'm a little bit ahead of myself. So uh, Karachi was an interesting place because um, Mary had to adjust to a place where there was no supermarkets in those days. But we had servants, we had lots of servants. We had, we had a cook, we had an ayah to help the children. We had Adobe Waller to do the laundry. We had a gardener to, to, to do the garden. And we had a guard uh, called Chokidar. So we were in Karachi and it, it was not an easy place to get used to, but Mary managed it, she was superb. But I had to do, again, quite a lot of travel. And I uh, was up in Afghanistan several times. Really interesting place if you've ever been there. Anyway, uh, the International Harvester had sold a lot of trucks to Afghanistan through USAID. And the distributor there was a Canadian. Him and his brother had founded, in fact, Ariana Airlines. But he had the franchise for international trucks, Massey Ferguson tractors. Well, it was no good to me. So I'm going looking for an alternative distributor for the tractors. And there's a little story here, I'd like to tell it. It's a true story. So I'm talking to these two Afghanis. I remember the names, Nasir, Shansa, Dawood, Musa. And this old tribesman came in. So I'd stick something out of his clothes. Oh, this old fellow, we sometimes get things from him. He's, he's reliable, he goes foster king and for gemstones and things like that. So I see what he's got. There might be something interesting there. So he opened it in his kerchief and put it on the table. And, well, there was one that was a bit pinkish. I thought, mm, maybe that's a ruby. He said, yes, it is ruby. So I said, how much does he want for it? 20 US dollars. But he said to me, you buy, take to uh, Karachi, and they will cut it into a nice gemstone. I said, well, what you say is right. I'll take it to Karachi, get it cut gemstones, and when I come back, I'll pay you the $20. He said, okay. I thought, shit, now I'm in trouble. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Sorry, I skipped something very important. There was a war. Pakistani-Indian War. We knew that there was trouble coming. Mary and their children went to the UK, spent quite a long time up in Scotland. I hung on for a while. And we used to listen to the shortwave radio, and the shortwave radio could get it quite well certain times of the day, and the BBC would say, you know, there's, there's got to be so-and-so and so-and-so, there's got to be a truce, there's no bombs drop between 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock on such and such a day, because they had been dropping bombs all over the place, on the airport, quite close to us, and also in some of the residential areas. So, you know, everybody had left except the Brits. We were told to get to the airport on such and such a day, such and such a time. I don't know how I got to the airport now, but I do remember all there was two classes of British nationals. There was British national who was British, and there was new Commonwealth. Same looking passport, but not quite the same. They did have automatic right of the bone. But going to the airport, there was these 
thousands, lots and lots of Pakistani waving blue passports. And so they weren't going to get on the plane. And the, I was met by this big Marine, big as me and wider. He said, follow me. Went through and I went through carrying my briefcase. And then the, uh, they brought in these um, Hercules airplanes from Bezira in the Persian Gulf at five at a time, one coming in one at a time. And the uh, plane came in, and <laughs> down and dodged the uh, holes in the road, made all over the beds of rough filament. And then back came down. The guys came out, guns at the ready, kneeling, you know. But they just pushed us on the plane, two rows, another two rows. I'm telling you all this because what was Mary doing in Londres? So Mary's stuck in England. Her communication says, there isn't any. She hadn't got a clue what was happening. <laughs> anyway, she weathered that brilliantly. And then uh, we were in Britain for a couple of weeks. Then I could make communication with the head office in Chicago. And then we said, well, we might as well take our home leave. In those days, we got seven weeks, maybe two years. So we said, right on. So we, it was a truce call. There was no more bombing. And so we flew back to Pakistan, changed the clothes or did a few things, flown down to Australia. I had five weeks in Australia with our friends and then flew back to Pakistan. Not a thing touched in our house, nothing. It was sparkling, clean, everything. Then uh, from Pakistan anyway, and I, I won't go on about uh, Afghanistan. There's, there's lots of stories there, but I'll, I'll move on. We moved to uh, Beirut. I had responsibility for our joint venture company in India uh, because I couldn't fly to there because Pakistani airlines couldn't fly to India. Indian airlines couldn't fly to Pakistan, so I had to use Aeroflot. Aeroflot then to Bombay, Aeroflot then down to Ceylon before it was called Sri Lanka. It was unworkable and you couldn't communicate very effectively. So uh, we decided that we would relocate in Beirut where we had a, quite a big office for Middle East and So we went to Beirut and we enjoyed Beirut immensely. Good social life, very good accommodation and a very nice apartment. And we made friends there. This guy here is Ted Keeley. You've heard me talk about Ted. Ted and I first met when we moved to Singapore. And uh, we've been good friends ever since. And then we met up again in Beirut. And uh, that's 50 years now we've been good mates. And I'm going over to see him in a month's time. That's his wife. Eat this one, Noreen. And there's Pretty Mary. What do you think? She's all right, isn't she? Yeah. So then we moved to Turkey. Yeah. Uh, we had a joint venture in Turkey. Our joint venture is with the military. Yes. The military ran Turkey very well in those days. Their pension fund had invested in Renault and in International Harvester to build cars, Renault cars, International Harvester trucks and tractors and things. Uh, that was a really interesting assignment. I liked it a lot. We made good friends there. This is uh, our friends. She's Irish. She had five kids? Seven. Seven kids. I digress, so stop a little bit. So when we moved to Turkey, we rented a place in Wishakoy, whatever the name of the village was. Not a bad place. He had built it where he lived on top and he had an identical apartment on below. So it was a little separated. We had a party for the, because I worked for the Americans, a lot of American businessmen. And we had the consul general guy there as well. And I said to him, we have to move from here. He said, I think I can help you. He said, we've got a place. Our niece has been taken over by a princess Nezla Shah. I said, oh, well, I'm right. He said, yeah, he said, you're going to have a talk to her and you, maybe you can, you, you can take it over. What's Princess Nestle show? Well, I did go and go and see her. And she said, yes, and he's right. Of course you can. But what's the story behind it? The British Navy spares it away the, some of the uh, bottom and, you know, principles. Uh, away because if they'd left them there, they would have probably got chopped. But the women were allowed back, or some women were allowed back. And I think Nestleshire was, in fact, a, 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 gra a granddaughter of the old Ottima. And uh, she was a nice lady and very well-spoken. So she said, yes, of course. So we then rented the house that she had been leasing. I didn't quite get the connection with the Americans. But anyway, 
She said, I had to go and talk to the owner, Dr. Savage. So I went to Dr. Savage and I said, uh, talk to Princess Nestle show. And she's okay for us to rent their house because she's moving into her, her own house. And he said, yeah, that sounds okay. And I said, would you like to be paid in American dollars? He said, yes. I said, oh, okay. So can we sort of agree a, a US dollar price? He said, yes. And so we did a deal and he got his US dollars paid offshore and I got a good price. <laughs> While I'm talking about it, it was on the, on the Bosphorus, looking, looking, looking down, at, you can see all the ships going up and down, US aircraft carriers and all that sort of thing. The new bridge was just over there. It was very steep and it was built out. It was two pylons keeping it up and it was on a ball and socket. So it was told, designed by a German for earthquakes. We did have one earthquake while we were there, but it was in Janakali. Anyway, interesting story. And a very, very interesting house. Right, moving on. So now I was skiing. We were on Les Alps in January 1980. So we're skiing up in the, in Lacluza or up to us. This is the upper ski. And there's Mary. Look at her up there. Oh, see him? There's Katrina. And there's Nicola. And there's our other friends. The Colby Ridges. Anyway, moving on. There's another one. Skiing. We did a little bit of skiing in France. Oh, we have this house. So you ask Mary, of all the places you've lived in, what did you like the best? Well, it, it France. France was first. What was next best? Saudi Arabia, you wait and see. So here we are, the little house we lived there in France. It was my mother and our stupid dog called Rebel. And that was the first time that I had to commute. I had to take the navet, the train, the RER and the metro to get to work. And I used to get home, generally about seven-ish I get home, normally, sometimes later. Put a couple of things on the barbie, crack open the bottle with vino, it was all right. <laughs> then, we go, then we go to Saudi Arabia. Nicola came out with the kids, as you can see, and celebrating Halloween, 1992. You wouldn't think that of Saudi, would you? Um, I put this in because uh, between Sakaka and Tobruk in the northern part of the Arabian Peninsula, there are some, well, there's a lot of sand dunes all over the place, but these are seriously large sand dunes, and you're driving around through them like this. There was this solitary tree. It's about 200 meters from the road, so I trudged across the sand. I took that picture. And I really wondered, and to this day I still wonder, how the hell did that thing get there? That's a sand, that's a sand dew. Did a bird drop a seed? Or did a camel defecate or something? I don't know. So I used that in a pep talk to the guys, saying, if you want to succeed, persistence is important. That is persistence, perseverance. You know, again, there. Uh, it was a good little, good little thing to tell them. Yeah. So now we're in Saudi, and uh, 2002. Yeah, we got good accommodation. We have a very, very nice life there, with uh, with the, the expatriates. Uh, Mary was happy. Nice quality furniture. The pay there was not bad, pretty good pay, and everything is all found. There's no income tax, so they provide the accommodation. They provide the car, they provide the furniture in the accommodation, la 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 la. That's the way it works in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Not bad, eh? Yeah, not bad. Uh, with our friend, so 2003, so Mary's happy. I think it's really Brian Sendel there. Turning another one. You had a good social life. She's loving it, isn't she? Then we come back here. So now, what have we got to do? This is July 2003, we're up in Manitambari. Well, we're dreaming. We thought, well, maybe we might retire up in uh, Sunshine Coast. Might like it up there. So we debated and, well, we actually didn't do it, but there was a couple of picks. Take them out in that era. It's very nice, isn't it? It's the scenery. 
outstanding. Then me, I go on holiday down into Fuenga Road in Spain. You'll see a few of these. I'm putting them up to show you that Mary was up for everything. All kinds of fun, all kinds of singing, wanting to have a good time. And there she is, you know, with a broom and with her friend Linda. And they're singing away and carrying on. And we're going, whoopee! And then uh, there is another one. Look at her. That's Mary, huh? You've seen some of Mary, but Mary had a lot more. She had a lot going for her. Then up at the back of there in Spain, Fuenga Roland, great ravine there, uh, Roman baths and everything. It, a lot of history in Spain. Yeah. Uh, there's Marbella, a lovely sister in law, Monaco. Yeah, happy. Oh, uh, that's back here, 2004. Yeah, no, I don't know. We took that picture for some reason, but anyway, I like the picture. It's a nice picture, isn't it? There she is there now. I've got these slides a little bit confused. We had the British Prince Andrew as a promoter of well, trade. He was useless, totally wooden. Anyway, he came to Bahrain to talk to us. And I think we could, that might be why we were dressed up for it, you know. I'm not sure. Then, then this is when we were in, in Egypt, May. I, I went and recruit another guy for our, uh, for our branch manager, Riha. There's Mary, top of the donkey. Um, about the oldest pyramid, I think, Ben. I don't know, I can't remember, but she's got dressed up nice flowers. Okay, now we're in Dorset. Now, I've got these slides a little bit mixed, but it doesn't matter, it tells a story. So this is a farming group here. So this um, lady here, that's my, one of my first cousins. She has a farm, Rosemary. And she was married to this guy. Was, they split up and many died. So no one with us. Um, this is my mother there. And of course, the lovely Mary there. And this is my mother's sister, Bessie, I called BB. She was the outdoor girl on the farm. My mother was the indoor girl. <laughs> and there's my young brother. He, he passed away from motor neuron disease. And our lovely sister-in-law, who was married to my brother. That was 2004. Yeah. Um, to, I just threw this one in because Mary was able to empathize with everybody. And this is a, a child of one of the distant cousins, and she's playing with them. Not everybody loved her. And here we are, Christmas time, on one of the farms, slowing outside, and that's Mary. So you see all types of Marys, don't you? Now, uh, in 2005, uh, this group, we all decided to climb uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. And then after Kilimanjaro, we got a hot air balloon go over the Serengeti to see all the animals. So this is before the balloon went up. It was a big balloon because there's how many of us there? There's eight of us there. And there was another couple. There was 12 of us in this balloon basket. And then afterwards, you come down and you have champagne breakfast. So that's us having our champagne after we've had the flight. That was the company I worked for, Medco. And the girls, they didn't go up Mount Kilimanjaro. Girls stayed below. Well, I'm not laughing at them, I'm laughing with them. They've got World Trade Center up there, and it's just a clunky little bubble. <laughs> I put this picture in because uh, I wanted to show you what we could get done in Saudi Arabia. This is a Christmas tree with all the trimmings, all the bits and pieces readily available. You just have to go to the right shop, store, and you can buy all these trinkets. People don't really believe that or understand it. My mother, who was a very good seamstress, she could make things, and she loved going there. She went to Zabal. Zabal's, they had over a million buttons, and, I don't know, kilometers of cloths of all description, and she loved it. Anyway, that Christmas tree tells you a little story there. Then I retired in, uh, in May 2006 from Saudi. We went to the UK for a few months, and there were, the girls were having a walk in the Dales. Very nice it was, too. Love it. And then back here, December 2006, at St. Nicholas. We're in France on holiday, and we go to the Somme to Pete Val. Some of you may have been there. It's very sobering because the Delsies have got their uh, memorial there. 
I think the figure is something like 60,000 or 65,000 Australians got killed. They sacrificed more men for capital than any of the other allies. But that particular monument is massive, it's huge. And we went to find Mary's grandfather, John Butt. And there we found him. So that was what that was about. <laughs> we're down in Chantecler in the south of France, and the girls are into it. I want to give you a good tip. If you want a good holiday, and if you're with some friends that you like being with, you can hire these vans in France. They are immaculately maintained. The only thing you had to hire was maybe a pillow or a pillowcase and a sheet. All everything else is provided. There it's just again. Now we're in France, that's 2008 now. What are we doing there? We're doing there. And then we go over to the States. And uh, our friend Ted, who I showed you before, his daughter uh, was a coach at uh, Las Vegas University. And she had a condominium there. And so she allowed us to use it. And so we were there for about a week. And that was us celebrating our wedding anniversary, 28th of October, in 2008, in Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> so we went to all the parties. <laughs> Couldn't stop them. There you go, look at them. And then our friends came out here, and we took them to Sunshine Coast. And then we took them to Canberra, took them down to Melbourne. They left us in Melbourne, they flew to New Zealand and seen somebody over there. And then we're back down to Rock Broad, 2009. I don't know, Mary put me up to it, I promise. And then uh, London, about the same time, we opened our friends to see War Force. And London was a good show, thought I enjoyed that. That's her sister, Mary in the middle, and her brother-in-law, who's passed on, he got meningitis. Nasty disease. Yeah. Now we're back down in Fuengarola again, and 2014, had the street buskers singing that, Mary's up. And then we were back up in Scotland, 2018. Well, I like that pic. 80th or 79th birthday. And now, her 80th birthday. So the family, the grandchildren and daughters, they put on an excellent show. Surprise party for Mary at home. And they had a table laden with food that you could graze. Apparently that's what you do, you graze. And... Uh, that we had entertainment, singing. Very well did the dance, I'm not much chopper dancing, but she can dance. <laughs> she won dancing competitions when she was young. That's her 83rd birthday. Mm. Yes. And there oh, she is. Yeah. Put it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, Monica came out from England. And we took this B&B up in Fort Macquarie, which I can recommend. It's not cheap and it's quite expensive. So that's Mary there. That's about the last pick. One more pick. We came back with a nibbles with our favorites. Um, see Mary there in the middle. And shortly after that, she took sick. That's it. Uh, if I could say a few words, please. I'd um, just like to thank Richard Lizziger. Thank Richard for all those wonderful stories about the long life, wonderful long life that uh, he and Mary shared together. Um, it just demonstrates, I think, to all of us what a wonderful, resourceful and resilient person that Mary was. I just remember her smile. Uh, when Richard first set his eyes on Mary in the church, he was um, totally bewitched. <laughs> Here's a little song. Those fingers in my hair that's why I come hither to stare. That strips my conscience bare. It's witchcraft, the Halloween kind of handicraft. And I've got no defense for it. The heat is too intense for it. What good would common sense for it do? What good would it do? 
Because it's witchcraft, Scooby-Dooby-Doo. Wicked witchcraft, Scooby-Dooby-Doo. And although I know it's strictly tab, taboo, taboo. When you arouse the need in me, my heart says yes indeed in me. Proceed with what you're leading me to. I'll for sure wind up in the stew. It's such an ancient pit, oh, yeah. but one I wouldn't switch. Because, Cause there's no nicer weeds than you. Couldn't find a nicer weed than you. Nicer weeds than you. Now, as you also heard, uh, after a few years of um, wonderful marriage, Mary and Richard were blessed with a baby. So uh, here's one for the baby. This next song has uh, no particular relevance. We, uh, we're just singing it because we like it. Oh, it has a chorus, so if you want to join in the chorus, please feel free. Oh, baby, we'd be so fine. 
life can be a dream. Shaboom, if only all my precious plans would come true. If you would let me spend my whole life loving you, life would be a dream, sweetheart. Ba da ba 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 Shaboom, shaboom. Ya da 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 da. Shaboom, shaboom. Ya da 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 da. Shaboom, shaboom. Ya da 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 da. Shaboom. Ah, shaboom, 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 Ah, you know that every time I look at you, something is on my mind, on my mind. If you do what I want you to, oh baby. We'll be so fine, so fine. Life could be a dream if I could take you up to paradise up above. If you would tell me I'm the only one that you love, life would be a dream, sweetheart. Hello, hello again, shaboom, and hope we'll meet again. Shaboom, 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 Life could be a dream, sweetheart. Shaboom, shaboom, sweetheart. Shaboom, shaboom, sweetheart. Shaboom, shaboom, sweetheart. Tune up. next song we're going to sing is one of our favorite songs, one of Mary's favorite songs. In fact, probably it's one of all of our spouses' songs, uh, favorite songs, and, and it's from The Lion King. That's true, isn't it, guys? Yeah, yeah. good. Hello. I was right. Exactly. In, for once. For once. Uh, each, please. Tune up. Moment and the 
sees me through. It's enough for this restless warrior just to be below. And can you feel the love tonight, tonight? It is where we are. It's enough for this wide-eyed wanderer that we got this far. And another one that we really like, and this is the last one, so therefore then you can have all the nibbles and stuff. Um, it's just a wonderful world we live in. And that's the, that's the song. Big please. Shoot up. What? 
faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry, I watch them grow. They are not much more than I ever know. And I think to myself, to raise your daughters for a toast to Mary McMillan Denton. So many things I can say about Mary, but pretty much said them all. She was a lovely, lovely lady. She was a friend. She was a mate. Confidant. She's lovely. I'm also the rigid. Thank you. Thank you.